Bell. He was a very proud club with a lot of very wealthy members in the, from the turn of the century up through the 20s. On the ladies' side, uh, they had two ladies who had been runner-ups for the U.S. Amateur Championship. They had many ladies' championships here, and they had the Berth Ellen Cup, which is was the uh, the premier ladies' invitational uh, tournament before the ladies' amateur every year. So the ladies had quite a record, and they probably had as good or not, if not better, a collection of great lady players in any club. Uh, Glenna Collette actually ended up as a member over here, although nobody knows it. Uh, now, the men had uh, perhaps an even more remarkable history of winning the Philadelphia Bowls every year for so many years in a row until finally a motion at the Golf Association was that they discontinue it. And uh, Hunting Valley was the only one that voted against discontinuing. <laughs> uh, if you're interested, I can show you a lot of those in the trophy room. Uh, and then they, they also had the premier invitation tournament before the, the amateur, the Linwood Hall, where Mr. Widener had donated a solid gold trophy. Uh, and it, the first trophy was retired because one guy won it three years in a row. And that came up for auction about 10 years ago up in New England. I want, before we're done, to mention uh, the feature interview that I did for golfclubatlas.com. You can find this in the December 2001 feature interview. It covers a great deal of information about Hunting Valley, about why I wrote the book, the change in conditions uh, over the years. Uh, in, in the other moment that I have left, I really want to highlight the difference in the standards of play between when I was young and today. An awful lot of this is caused by the great length achieved with the golf ball and the equipment. And some of it is affected by the rough, which is now kept so much shorter. Uh, even with firm greens, the challenges do not remain the same. Uh, the, for instance, Flynn, as I note in here and also in my book, uh, intended the player to hit practically every club at some point in the round. Now, how often are people hitting fairway woods to par fours, or three irons or two irons to par fours? Instead, they're crushing the ball as far as they can and then, since they're only hitting a wedge, they're hitting the 400-yard hole, 450-yard hole, with driving a wedge or driving an eight iron. Even if they're in the rough, they can get out. Now, how can we get the USGA to develop a ball which goes the same length, for instance, that Ben Hogan hit it back in, before his accident? In his book, Power Golf, for instance, he hit a five iron 150 yards, 155. Now think about that. But I thank the, U the Golf Association for the chance to talk. I hope this has been helpful. And I hope everybody uh, has a successful series of rounds of golf. Thank you so much.